And then the finale to come in this pick five. Sorry, be our race of the week. Seven furlongs, $250,000 purse. The Candyman Rocket, three to one right now. Coming off that big one in the run. Happy Wayburn, six to five. Jose Ortiz looking for number four today. Yeah, I mean, he figured to be a short price. It was the one to two. So a lot more in this field coming up. Of course, this race paying tribute to one of the true legends in this sport, a Hall of Fame trainer. John Neighbor, though, had arguably a much bigger impact on the sport from the things he did outside of his training, including being one of the early pioneers and helping develop the Breeders' Cup become what it is today. But when you mention all the great horses that Neighbor had throughout that Hall of Fame career, there is one horse that he is always tied to and comes first to mind, Dr. Fager. I only had one horse that could run. That's Dr. Fager. He could run. <laughs> he was my brother. He was my banker. And he was everything. And I was lucky I owned 25% of him. I never put my name on the program because I wanted Mr. McKnight to take them out. But Dr. Fager was what we refer to in the third grade industry as a freak. He could do anything. When he was a weanling and a yearling, I kept looking at him and I told the farm manager, this is a good horse. And he, he was nervous. He said, how the bloody hell can you say this is a good horse? And when I brought him up here and trained him, I knew he was a good horse. I ran him the first time and he was nine to one and he went by about nine lengths. He went on that year as a two-year-old and uh, he was second in the champagne and that got him beat for two-year-old of the year and i laid him at the and his three-year-old career was good it wasn't brilliant but it was good and he could run three quarters or a mile and a quarter he could run on the dirt he could run on the slop he could run on the turf and he was an easy horse to train he'd do anything you want and he was a very gentle horse he was a big strapping coat but he didn't want you to hit him, and he didn't want you to raise your voice at him. He just wanted you to leave him alone. And his four-year-old career was a phenomenon. He just went to everything. And I showed off a little when I sent him to Atlantic City to the turf course. He'd never run on the turf course. But if I thought I could win it, he would be turf horse of the year, because that's where all of them got turf horse of the year. And I sent him down there. It rained the night before, and it was a little slippery, and he was having a tough time with it. But the last eighth of a mile, the track was good, and he come on and he went. It. And he was horse of the year, sprint of the year, handicap horse of the year, and turf horse of the year. He went all four championships. And that never happened before, and it will never happen again, because I owned a quarter of him, and I could do as I pleased with him. And I run him back from that race to seven eighths of a mile at Aqueduct. He carried 139 pounds, and he went easy. He was a phenomenal voice. Doesn't seem real hearing it back, hearing that kind of weight, winning, winning four championships in one season, the only thoroughbred ever to do that, just incredible. He was the horse when I was younger, especially, and people I knew had been around longer than I have when you said, who was the best horse you ever saw? Universally, it was Dr. Fager. And uh, I talked to John Nayard a few times later, and I'd see him and ask him. I'd ask him one of the questions I asked him was, how Fabiano paid $85 in his debut? And it's a story for their time and place. And he was a great horse, but John Nayard had a lot of great horses. Should have had a Kentucky Derby, too. With? Shoe stood up at the oh, right yeah. before the wire. Yeah. Gallant uh, man. Good call. I didn't bet him. But he had some good moments in that Hall of Fame career. we got the John Nayard up next. We'll be back.